2월 26일 시온영어로 맥체인 성경통독 오늘 말씀은 출애굽기 9장 누가복음 12장 6기서 27장 고린도전서 13장 말씀입니다. 26. Exodus chapter 9 Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Go to Pharaoh. Tell him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go. Then they will be able to worship me. Do not refuse to let them go. Do not keep holding them back. If you refuse, my powerful hand will bring a terrible plague on you. I will strike your livestock in the fields. I will strike your horses, donkeys, camels, cattle, sheep and goats. But I will treat Israel's livestock differently from yours. No animal that belongs to the people of Israel will die. The Lord set a time for the plague. He said, Tomorrow I will send it on the land. So the next day the Lord sent it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died. But not one animal that belonged to the Israelites died. Pharaoh searched and found out what had happened. He discovered that not even one animal that belonged to the Israelites had died. But he was still very stubborn. He wouldn't let the people go. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. He said, Take handfuls of ashes from a furnace. Have Moses toss them into the air in front of Pharaoh. The ashes will turn into fine dust over the whole land of Egypt. Then painful boils will break out on people and animals all over the land. Their bodies will be covered with them. So Moses and Aaron took ashes from a furnace and stood in front of Pharaoh. Moses tossed them into the air. Then boils broke out on people and animals alike. The bodies of all the Egyptians were covered with boils. The magicians couldn't stand in front of Moses because of the boils that were all over them. But the Lord made Pharaoh stubborn. Pharaoh wouldn't listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Get up early in the morning. Go to Pharaoh and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go. Then they will be able to worship me. If you do not let them go, I will send the full force of my plagues against you this time. They will strike your officials and your people. Then you will know that there is no one like me in the whole earth. By now I could have reached out my hand. I could have struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I had a special reason for making you king. I decided to show you my power. I wanted my name to become known everywhere on earth. But you are still against my people. You will not let them go. So at this time tomorrow I will send the worst hailstorm ever to fall on Egypt in its entire history. Give an order now to bring your livestock inside to a safe place. Bring in everything that is outside. The hail will fall on all the people and animals that are left outside. They will die. The officials of Pharaoh who had respect for what the Lord had said obeyed him. They hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But others didn't pay attention to what the Lord had said. They left their slaves and livestock outside. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Reach out your hand toward the sky. Then hail will fall all over Egypt. It will beat down on people and animals alike. It will strike everything growing in the fields of Egypt. Moses reached out his walking stick toward the sky. Then the Lord sent thunder and hail. Lightning flashed down to the ground. The Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in Egypt's entire history. Hail struck everything in the fields all over Egypt. It fell on people and animals alike. It beat down everything growing in the fields. It tore all the leaves off the trees. The only place it didn't hail was in the area of Goshen. That's where the people of Israel were. 
Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron. This time I've sinned, he said to them. The Lord has done what is right. I and my people have done what is wrong. Pray to the Lord, because we've had enough thunder and hail. I'll let you and your people go. You don't have to stay here any longer. Moses replied, when I've left the city, I'll lift up my hands and pray to the Lord. The thunder will stop. There won't be any more hail. Then you will know that the earth belongs to the Lord. But I know that you and your officials still don't have any respect for the Lord God. The barley was ripe. The flax was in bloom. So they were both destroyed. But the wheat and spelt weren't destroyed. That's because they ripen later. Then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. Moses lifted up his hands and prayed to the Lord. The thunder and hail stopped. The rain didn't pour down on the land any longer. Pharaoh saw that the rain, hail and thunder had stopped. So he sinned again. He and his officials became stubborn. So Pharaoh was stubborn. He wouldn't let the people of Israel go, just as the Lord had said through Moses. Luke chapter 12 During that time a crowd of many thousands had gathered. There were so many people that they were stepping on one another. Jesus spoke first to his disciples. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, he said. They just pretend to be godly. Everything that is secret will be brought out into the open. Everything that is hidden will be uncovered. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. What you have whispered to someone behind closed doors will be shouted from the rooftops. My friends, listen to me. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't do any more than that. I will show you whom you should be afraid of. Be afraid of the one who has the authority to throw you into hell after you have been killed. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of him. Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? But God does not forget even one of them. In fact, he even counts every hair on your head. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. What about someone who says in front of others that he knows me? I tell you, the Son of Man will say in front of God's angels that he knows that person. But what about someone who says in front of others that he doesn't know me? I, the Son of Man, will say in front of God's angels that I don't know him. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks evil things against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. You will be brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities. But do not worry about how to stand up for yourselves or what to say. The Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Someone in the crowd spoke to Jesus. Teacher, he said, tell my brother to divide the family property with me. Jesus replied, friend, who made me a judge or umpire between you? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Then Jesus told them a story. He said, a certain rich man's land produced a very large crop. He thought to himself, what should I do? I don't have any place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. I will store my extra grain in them. I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain stored away for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink and have a good time. But God said to him, you foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? That is how it will be for whoever stores. Things away for themselves but is not rich in the sight of God. Then Jesus spoke to his disciples. He said, I tell you, do not worry. Don't worry about your life and what you will eat. And don't worry about your body and what you will wear. There is more to life than eating. 
There are more important things for the body than clothes. Think about the ravens. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't have any barns at all. But God feeds them. You are worth much more than birds. Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? You can't do that very little thing. So why worry about the rest? Think about how the wild flowers grow. They don't work or make clothing. But here is what I tell you. Not even Solomon in his royal robes was dressed like one of those flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, how much better will he dress you? After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it is thrown into the fire. Your faith is so small. Don't spend time thinking about what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about it. People who are ungodly run after all those things. Your father knows that you need them. But put God's kingdom first. Then those other things will also be given to you. Little flock, do not be afraid. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell what you own. Give to those who are poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. Store up riches in heaven that will never be used up. There, no thief can come near it. There, no moth can destroy it. Your heart will be where your riches are. Be dressed and ready to serve. Keep your lamps burning. Be like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding dinner. When he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready when he comes. What I'm about to tell you is true. The master will then dress himself so he can serve them. He will have them take their places at the table. And he will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready. It will even be good if he comes in the middle of the night or toward morning. But here is what you must understand. Suppose the owner of the house knew at what hour the robber was coming. He would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready. The Son of Man will come at an hour when you don't expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this story to us, or to everyone? The Lord answered, Suppose a master puts one of his servants in charge of his other servants. The servant's job is to give them the food they are to receive at the right time. The master wants a faithful and wise manager for this. It will be good for the servant if the master finds him doing his job when the master returns. What I'm about to tell you is true. The master will put that servant in charge of everything he owns. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time to come back. Suppose that servant begins to beat the other servants, both men and women. Suppose he feeds himself. And suppose he drinks until he gets drunk. The master of that servant will come back on a day the servant doesn't expect him. The master will return at an hour the servant doesn't know. Then the master will cut him to pieces. He will send the servant to the place where unbelievers go. Suppose a servant knows the master's wishes. But the servant doesn't get ready and doesn't do what the master wants. Then that servant will receive a heavy beating. But suppose the servant does not know his master's wishes. And suppose the servant does things for which he should be punished. He will receive a lighter beating. Much will be required of everyone who has been given much. Even more will be asked of the person who is supposed to take care of much. I have come to bring fire on the earth. How I wish the fire had already started. But I have a baptism of suffering to go through. And I must go through it. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you. I have come to separate people. From now on there will be five members in a family, each one against the other. There will be three against two and two against three. They will be separated. Father will turn against son and son against father. 
Mother will turn against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law will turn against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus spoke to the crowd. He said, you see a cloud rising in the west. Right away you say, it's going to rain. And it does. The south wind blows. So you say, it's going to be hot. And it is. You pretenders. You know how to understand the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why can't you understand the meaning of what is happening right now? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Suppose someone has a claim against you, and you are on your way to court. Try hard to settle the matter on the way. If you don't, that person may drag you off to the judge. The judge may turn you over to the officer. And the officer may throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the very last penny. Job 27 Job continued to speak. He said, God hasn't treated me fairly. The Mighty One has made my life bitter. You can be sure that God lives. And here's something else you can be sure of. As long as I have life and God gives me breath, my mouth won't say evil things. My lips won't tell lies. I'll never admit you people are right. Until I die, I'll say I'm telling the truth. I'll continue to say I'm right. I'll never let go of that. I won't blame myself as long as I live. May my enemies suffer like sinful people. May my attackers be punished like those who aren't fair. What hope do ungodly people have when their lives are cut short? What hope do they have when God takes away their lives? God won't listen to their cry when trouble comes on them. They won't take delight in the Mighty One. They'll never call out to God. I'll teach all of you about God's power. I won't hide the things the Mighty One does. You have seen those things yourselves. So why do you continue your useless talk? Here's what God does to sinful people. Here's what those who are mean receive from the Mighty One. All their children will be killed by swords. They'll never have enough to eat. A plague will kill those who are left alive. The widows of sinful men won't even weep over their own children. Sinners might store up silver like dust and clothes like piles of clay. But people who do what is right will wear those clothes. People who haven't done anything wrong will divide up that silver. The house an evil person builds is like a moth's cocoon. It's like a hut that's made by someone on guard duty. Sinful people lie down wealthy, but their wealth is taken away. When they open their eyes, everything is gone. Terrors sweep over them like a flood. A storm takes them away during the night. The east wind carries them off, and they are gone. It sweeps them out of their houses. It blows against them without mercy. They try to escape from its power. It claps its hands and makes fun of them. It hisses them out of their houses. First Corinthians 13 Suppose I speak in the languages of human beings or of angels. If I don't have love, I am only a loud gong or a noisy cymbal. Suppose I have the gift of prophecy. Suppose I can understand all the secret things of God and know everything about Him. And suppose I have enough faith to move mountains. If I don't have love, I am nothing at all. Suppose I give everything I have to poor people. And suppose I give myself over to a difficult life so I can brag. If I don't have love, I get nothing at all. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not want what belongs to others. It does not brag. It is not proud. It does not dishonor other people. It does not look out for its own interests. It does not easily become angry. It does not keep track of other people's wrongs. Love is not happy with evil but it is full of joy when the truth is spoken. 
It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. But prophecy will pass away. Speaking in languages that had not been known before will end. And knowledge will pass away. What we know now is not complete. What we prophesy now is not perfect. But when what is complete comes, the things that are not complete will pass away. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I had the understanding of a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Now we see only a dim likeness of things. It is as if we were seeing them in a foggy mirror. But someday we will see clearly. We will see face to face. What I know now is not complete. But someday I will know completely, just as God knows me completely. The three most important things to have are faith, hope and love. But the greatest of them is love.